Hey everybody, Sean here from Shooty School. Check out shootyschool.com for hundreds of free videos just like this one plus full courses. Today we're in Easy Mix 3. We're going to talk about layout. It's going to be very simple yet effective for your workflow. So let's get started. Let's hop right in using standalone mode. We're not in our DAW yet. If you look at this header up here, if I double click on it, you'll instantly go to full screen, which is very helpful. If you click on that header again, it will return to its previous size, the previous state it was in. So it's not something consistent. It's wherever you had it last. Now you can readjust the vertical size from the top or the bottom, the horizontal size from the left or the right, or if you mouse over any corner, your cursor should change so you can do vertical and horizontal at the same time. I'll double click again to go full screen. Now, when it comes to Easy Mix 3 in your DAW, it's usually just a window floating around. And you can't double click the header to make it full screen. I don't think any DAWs can make your plugins full screen truly. If yours has an exception, comment below. What I do is I grab the header and I'll drag the upper left corner of my plugin to where I want it. And then you can't resize from the left, top, or bottom. You have to go to the bottom right of the plugin. To resize it and I'll just look for my cursor to change and I'll drag it to how big I want it to be. So it's not truly full screen but that's as big as I can make it in this DAW which is Reaper but in most DAWs. Now what I prefer to do from a layout point of view is I'll drag this header underneath the timeline and the markers in the transport of my DAW session. And then I'll make it as big as possible, like this. Or sometimes some DAWs have their transport at the bottom of the screen. Maybe I'll leave a little room for that transport, like Studio One, for example. That's my preference. I actually cover layouts like that in my DAW frustrations video. You might want to check it out, but this is how I prefer to lay out my plugins in my DAW. New to Tune Track software in general is a compact view. Keep an eye on this preset list panel over here on the right. If I collapse Easy Mix horizontally enough, we'll see that preset list go away. See, it just went away. It's collapsed into its own tab. It's not a panel anymore, and you have to click on it to access it. That's okay, though, because we can actually make Easy Mix 3 that skinny. Same thing vertically. Check out this effects control area. If I squeeze Easy Mix vertically instead, we can watch that go away. And now we have our own effects control panel. So now we have four tabs instead of two, and we've collapsed all our panels. We can make Easy Mix 3 this small. It's very cool. Our main menu didn't go away. It's under this little hamburger icon right here. So here's our main menu. If you start a new project, don't be confused if it looks a little different without the icons. That just means you're in compact mode. It's still the same it's quick start. Just doesn't look exactly the same. And you'll notice as you start adding filters and stacking, you know, multiple presets that it will start getting pretty crowded. Your fifth string will start filling up and then your effect slots will battle for some room up there. And when you're on the similarity map, things might start looking a little crowded, but just keep in mind, you can zoom into the similarity map with your mouse wheel and you can click in a blank area to scoot around and still be able to utilize compact mode for everything. We're going to talk about some boring stuff, but really important stuff to keep in mind in the future for troubleshooting. If I go over to view, I'll start near the bottom, reset to default size and scale. If Easy Mix 3 understands your graphics card settings and your computer screen resolution well enough, this should turn into a real safe size that shows you everything you can still work on everything easily. If you go under view and go set to minimal size and scale, this might be a good starting point if you're on a tiny computer monitor and Easy Mix is just so big, you know, you can't really tell what's going on. Select that and start from there. The reason why these two settings are important, this has happened to me plenty, not only with ToonTrack software, with plugins in general. You know, a lot of people are using their gear from 25 years ago. A lot of people are using their gear that they just bought yesterday. So. There's a bit of troubleshooting you got to do to make everything perfect. 
but these two settings can really bail you out when you launch, I don't know about standalone mode, but especially when you launch it as a plugin in your DAW, sometimes the plugin's so zoomed in in your face, you actually can't access things and use it because it's so in your face. If you can at least get to the view menu, you can use reset to default or reset the minimal and get that easy mix instance down small enough to where you can then start working with it and resizing it. So that's why these are super important. And since this is a common problem, let me just get into it a little bit more. If you launch your DAW and launch any plugin and it's zoomed in so far that you cannot shrink it down to a usable size, you're just stuck zoomed in, can't control anything. On Mac, I'd go into the settings and I would find your display settings and I would make the resolution as high as possible temporarily. And on PC, you would right click on your desktop to adjust your resolution there and make your resolution settings as high as possible temporarily. After you do that, hopefully you can see the borders of your plugin and then you can shrink your plugin down to as small as it can be. Then you can revert to your preferred monitor resolution settings that you were at a moment ago. And hopefully that plugin will now be small and you can start working from there. Hope that bails you out. I understand that might sound like a bunch of babble, but if you're having this problem, this is good information. Let's get back over to the view menu and we'll look at size and new in tune track software is just a couple size presets right out of the gate. I'll go through them real fast, but they're not going to look the same to you as they do for me. Cause that depends on your graphic settings and your monitor resolution, but we have compact right out of the gate. We have small, we have medium and we have large. So whether those work for you or not, I like to do everything manually and I'm going to explain what's actually happening by the, behind the scenes in case you really need to figure this out because you got a particular situation. So forget this preset menu real quick. You'll see what that looks like on your end for you. Down here on the size menu, we have 1080, 1440, and 2160. Now 1080, that's standard definition video. Uh, P stands for progressive, by the way, not interlaced. 1080 was the standard, probably the late 90s or early 2000s, and it's still holding the test of time. If you have a 1080p monitor or even an older monitor, you probably want to start here. If you go to 1440 now, this could be considered 2K. There's a couple different dimensions for 2K monitors, but if you have a 2K monitor, you can select 1440 here. And if you go down to size and go to 2160, this is 4K, which is probably the standard nowadays, even though it's going even further. A lot of people have 4K monitors. I do for this specifically, this tutorial. So 2160 might be for me. It's a little big, but it does get back on the screen. Oh, I'll double click the header, go full screen. It does look pretty perfect for me. So under size, what you want to do is figure out your, what your monitor resolution is and select it here first before moving on to the scale menu. And if you do not know what your monitor resolution is, just take an accurate guess. And if you have an older monitor, I'd start with 1080p. Now that we understand the size menu and have made the appropriate selection, now we can use the scale menu. And this works a little different as a plugin in your DAW, which we'll check out in a minute. We're in standalone mode right now, which always works perfect but right now we're at scale at 100 percent. and for people with poor eyesight they're really going to appreciate that scale will artificially zoom you in or zoom you out so things get bigger older versions of tune track products had really tiny text and as time went by people bought computer monitors with higher resolution and that text got even smaller so it was illegible now that's all solved really well so i can go to scale and i can zoom into 150 percent and all the graphics, but more importantly, the text is now more legible, the file menu text, all the text, even the tooltip text, which is super important, right? And you can also zoom out as well. I'll go out to 80%. I don't know why you would need to do this. There's a lot of space to work in in Easy Mix 3, but maybe you're sitting closer to your computer monitor than I am. So this will come in handy. Plus you can see more assets in the few areas where they're all stacked up and you want to see a lot at the same time. So, that is the scale menu after you select size. Now, as for your DAW, 
I mean, this can get a little tricky. Sometimes you just install Easy Mix 3, you launch it, it's there, and you never toy with it, so you never know you have these problems. A lot of people may be similar to me. I like to optimize everything so it's the perfect size. So right now, I'm in that reset to default size and scale, so this is a good, comfortable size to work in. Now, if I want to make this go full screen, which you can't really do in a DAW because DAWs put artificial visual wrappers around your DAW, like there's a header here, I think in some of the Mac products, not only will you have a header on top of your EasyMix plugin, but you also have a footer down here. So these visual DAW wrappers or borders, whatever you want to call them, are actually adding size to your plugin. So that's why you can truly never really make them full screen. But I'll go to view, I'll go to size, and I'll select 4K, which is 2160p, and let's see what happens. I can actually use Easy Mix 3, just like this, you might have a different experience if you select that button, especially if you're in an Apple product with the footer or whatever DAW adds that, right? But this is usable, but let me resize it. And we're all not going to have the same problems when it comes to sizing Easy Mix 3 in your DAW. I'm just trying to give you an example or two. So maybe you can troubleshoot your specific situation off of these examples. Let's see, I'm going to go to the bottom right because I want to resize this plugin. I'm going to wait for my arrow to change. I'm almost off screen here. There we go. I'm going to resize it. Now that's a problem because I actually didn't resize Easy Mix 3 because the its resolution was too big to actually grab the corner of Easy Mix 3. That was actually outside of the DAW wrapper. What I resized is the DAW visual wrapper. So I'm actually cropping Easy Mix 3. I'm not resizing it. And that's because my size, my resolution was too big. I am on a 4K monitor, but 4K inside of a DAW wrapper is actually too big. So maybe you can wrap your head around that. Even if you don't want to understand the verbiage, just take a look at what's happening. I'm trying to resize my plugin and I'm cropping it. That's bad. And that's the reason why I was so particular about this view menu, the reset to default size and scale, like that'll get you out of a bind like this. So I'll select reset to default size and scale. Another thing is this. Let's say we have easy mix this big and I go to view scale because I want to read better and I'll bust this up to 200. The same thing happened. Um, unlike standalone mode, Easy Mix 3 didn't figure out how to contain all this because it's stuck inside of this DAW wrapper. It doesn't understand the actual landscape that's going on. So now I'm cropped and zoomed in, right? So that's another problem. Let me reset the default size and scale. Again, why those settings are so important. Here's what I might want to do. If I want to resize my plugin so it's big, but also have big text, this could help out a lot of people that have eye issues. I will first make Easy Mix 3 small. Then I will go to the view menu, scale, and I'll bring it up to the legibility I want. 150 is pretty big, but let's say you need that. Easy Mix 3 window will then expand, but since I made it small, it will only expand so much. Now I resize it by dragging with my mouse. And now I have best of both worlds. I'm doing almost as good now as I was doing in standalone mode. So there we go. Perfect. Text size, great resolution to work in. Now I'm happy I have everything I want. So the last thing we can only talk about, we actually can't see it in action yet. If you go to the view menu down to the bottom, we see preset space and its option is effect, category, and names. Now this is still being worked on by ToonTrack. I reached out to them. They said in the next update or so, this part of the view menu will be all done. And this will directly relate to the similarity map tab. I have no clue what it's going to do, but the similarity map tab is very interesting and I look forward to any options or features to help my workflow in this area. So when that next update comes out, go right to the view menu and see what's here. It might not even be called preset space anymore. It might be a, something new there. So let's look forward to that. So that was layouts. I hope you learned something from it. Come back to me and learn more in my Easy Mix 3 series. Links to all this are down in the description. I'm Sean from Shooty School. Check out shootyschool.com for hundreds of free videos just like this one in full courses. And please 
comment, which is really important, really helps me out. Subscribe if you want to see me again. Consider donating at shootyschool.com for my efforts, and I hope to see you soon. Rock on.